<laughs> Who's the hardest? <laughs> that's that's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. So what was it like, like rubbing shoulders of celebrities and you're coming up? Like the first time <laughs> you actually rub shoulders of celebrities yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've made that transition from you know what? Mm. I'm an artist, but now yeah. I'm actually up there. I'm on the TV, I'm so, on the big screen. So that, that comes along with a long story, innit? Because like, obviously in our first promotions, we never heard ourselves on radio because we wasn't listening Radio 1. We wasn't listening mm. Capital. We was listening Choice FM and other pirate stations. I, I don't, like, don't want to say too much, come. I'm, one, one of your um, band members don't want to mm. talk too much about it, but mm -hmm. I'm sure one of you guys were away and that's the first time they actually heard Big Brother was when they was away. Is there any truth yeah, behind that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, because um, as, I, as I was saying, like, over here, like, I didn't know we was on radio, bro. I was just promoting, promoting, but I was listening like so solid. I was listening mm. next man's that was, <laughs> you know, so yeah, 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 of course. Like I went to school with Scat D, like you understand, and like through the recording process, I became cool with Mega, yeah, and like Mega, man. yeah, Ashar and all of those man, like you understand. Obviously, faces from Mansfield as well. So like to see him on like certain videos, we was like, ah, oh, certain man. Is making it like you did you guys ever do a tour like S Club Seven Soul Solica? It was you lot's name that was mm, kind of mm. up there in the mix. You know yeah, what I mean? Did you yeah. lot ever do a group tour? Not like really. A joint tour? Not really. Like I've been speaking to Mega more recently about that. Like you understand, we should like join forces and like you man do the house and garage thing, us man do the hip hop R and B thing. But as you can see, like even even Soul Solid, they they must admit that there was an influence from Big Brothers because like. After they did their album, Cool, we dropped ours. Like, you understand? The numbers was different immediately. Like, Big Brothers was outselling everyone. Like, you understand what I'm saying? So, So Solid's second album is more hip hop and R&B. Mm. If you check it, you like, you kind of sing along in Lisa Matthews. Yeah, started running with you get what I'm yeah, saying? Nah, nah, would you? Like, like, Romeo was, it's all gravy, baby. Mm, and having, Trino, Upside, yeah, Daddy, kind of Like, transition. you understand? The thing, they, they started to understand there's a formula to this. Mm which the formula is have some vocals on the chorus mm. and people enjoy hearing rap bars as well. Make you feel good. Like, yeah, feel you get what I'm music. saying? So a lot of people, even today, bro, like I see a lot of people using that same formula. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Everyone's who's successful, yeah, their chorus is always a singing chorus. Mm. The bars come secondary, like, you understand? Look at Stormzy, he's, he's using the same formula, bro. Yeah, no, he even fact. used He even used Baby Boy on his record, uh, Rachel's Little Brother. Like, yeah, oh yeah, stand. Randy was saying that. That was off yeah, the back yeah. of you lot's Absolutely. Tune, yeah. He was singing uh, Dion's verse at the end. Like, you understand? That's how much love he's showing man on that tune. Well, like, this is understand? what I'm trying to say, how instrumental you guys were to UK music, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. in us. Do you understand? Absolutely, like, absolutely. Bits of Big Brother is in yeah, art, the UK everywhere. artists right everywhere. now. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's, and what I'm saying. that's why I want to shed light on that. Do you absolutely. see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'd love for that because, like, a lot of artists won't admit it, like, you understand? Let's let's go to um, Styler G, for instance. He's my homeboy, homeboy. I got a lot of love for him. His first uh, video, my, I paid for that, like, you understand what I'm saying? He was using Man's Studio for free to record his first bits, but he'll never say out loud, ah, oh, Big Brothers was an inspiration, or, you understand, well, they why, did this, this, and this. No disrespect, like, no saying? disrespect to no one, but why is it like that? I have no idea. I don't get why the industry like, like that. Like, if if the man then bust a man, no, no, yeah, no funny yeah, business. Yeah. But you know what I mean? No, of course, Gigi. And it like, goes a long way, bro. This is this is my thing. Like, that's why when I come out, I'm like, raw. You know what? I, I show love to everyone. Like, you understand? Nah, still facts. that, still that cool little gangster in the hood. But like, you understand? I show love before I show any vexness. Like, you understand? Mm. I'm not mad at no one. In fact, like I tell men all the time, big up for this success. Keep up the good work this, that and the other, but don't count me out just let, just yet. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I still got a lot of life in me. And like, you might not see what I'm doing behind the scenes, but it's always big shit. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Especially cause like now our focus is like putting the UK on and show, shining a better light than we ever have back in the days. Like, you understand what I'm saying? So mm. it's a good look. So, you know, you said like, you're doing a lot of big things behind the scenes. And I know mm. you said earlier, Mm. that um, you was born in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me and you had a conversation the other day. You said mm. you actually flew out to Africa. How did that go? That and was How did amazing. that come about? And how did you feel when you stepped off the plane? Was you straight away in sync with it? Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you feel that vibe. 
100%. when I got off the plane to Jamaica, when I first went to Yard, yeah, yeah, yeah. got off the plane, I just felt the heat. Room, I was like, raw. Oh, no, exactly, exactly. You feel me? Exactly. I just felt good. My spirit exactly. was uplifted. I come back over here, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grey clouds and them thing there. No grey, doubt, grey no sky, doubt. you feel me? So Make you feel I, depressed a bit. Right, so what was that trip about? How did it go? What so, made you go back to the motherland? So the first time I went back since birth, yeah, was last year. Wow. Like, you get me? I was invited by a company called uh, GT Bank, Guaranteed Trust Bank. And like they're one of the bigger banks in in Africa, and they said, "Ah, oh, we see you're doing a lot of work with autism. Will you come and be a spokesperson this year?" So I was like, "Yeah, of course, man. Like you understand, I'm really passionate about the the condition." So like I came out, and as you say, I had been Jamaica a lot, like because of music or whatever. Mm. Like we went Jamaica with Maxi Priest and his youth, and you know, hung out with Red Lion, and you know, went studio, met couple artists, but like. That felt like home to me as well. Mm. Like, don't ever get it twisted. We're the you same. Felt rooted. We're the same people, of course bro. We are. Like, you understand what I'm are. saying? Like, when I'm saying to man in Jamaica that I'm from Africa, they're like, nah, man. I know who your dad is. Like, you understand? Yeah. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. They don't that's get not it. My dad. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> but like, they know a man who looks like me. Oh, and, 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 okay. And that's where they're going with that yeah. kind of thing. So again, when I came off of the plane in Nigeria first. I phoned up skills in it and I was like, raw, Reba, I'm here. Yeah. Like, it get me. And he was like, no way, where are you? So I gave him my hotel details. Skills pulled up in his whip, this, that. And he was like, I never thought I would see you in Africa, Reba. Like, and I was like, why? Like, you understand? I was never against Africa. You never heard me, like, gunning Africans. But, like, you understand? When I, when I got there, as you say, it felt like home. I saw people that looked like me, this, that, and the other. Like, Skills came to my events over there. And Skills is big people in Africa now. He's, like, stepped away from the music scene. He's doing more TV over there. He's okay. got a program that's similar to the Big Brother house. Oh, okay. But it's about, you know, entertainers in one house, like, gelling together, doing music together, coming up with routines, oh, this, swear. that. So it's a bit like making the band and Big Brother at the same time. He's, he's blowing up in Nigeria, I'm not going to lie. Man like Don Jazzy. We used to call him cigarette and that, like, you understand? Because mm. every time he came to us, he was like, oh, can I have cigarette? Can I have cigarette? Because <laughs> he had no bread to buy a cigarette. Imagine that. Now he's the biggest Afrobeat producer in the whole world, bro. Swear. Like, no, no gasoline. And he didn't have a penny to buy a fags. He never had no bread, really. That's why God again, is good, man. Again, like, we did a song together called Anything, yeah? It was a B-side to maybe Favourite Things. Mm. And, like, because Favourite Things charted and it did well, it? Big he went. Tune. He went home and was like, look, man, I did a record with Big Brothers and Sony Records. Like, I want to, like, get some equipment, this, that and the other. So he got investors in. Like, oh, is that how he got investors, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And they, they backed him we nicely. just name like, dropped him, that was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, fucking after that, he built his whole Maven's music group. Okay. Like, you understand? Working with people like The Banj, working with Tiwa Savage, working with... Who else? Like, all of them, like, are, are one unit, like, you understand? Mm. And stuff like that. So when I'm in Africa, especially in Nigeria, I feel like home, home. Mm. Like, you understand? There's a lot of people that I rocked with. Like, Tiwa was my girlfriend, like, when I was a youth. Like, you understand? She was, the first, she was the first chick I introduced to my parents. Like, right, this is my girlfriend. Down. What's yeah. she doing now? Tiwa Savage. Yeah. She's the, one of the biggest um, Afrobeats female artists. In the world I right now. She works that. with um, Beyonce, she works with everyone. Okay. Disney, this and that. Like, you understand? So, um, again, for me, it's a pleasure to see because, like, after all these years... You see the progression. The progress, Rude Boy. She was on a program called Sugar as well that was straight to MTV. Okay. And, like, my baby mother was like, oh, let's watch Sugar. And I was like, what's that? I'm watching it and it's like, my girlfriend it's is like asking snap. me about my ex-girlfriend is mad at the time. <laughs> like, Imagine that. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't say a word. I was just Oh, you didn't say a word? It. No. She go, no, no. Exactly. She go, exactly. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was comfortable in Nigeria. So, like, after the week that I did in Nigeria, giving, like, free consultations, like, because obviously a lot of people have autism in Nigeria, but they can't afford to go to hospital. Okay. They can't afford to get the diagnosis. So, like, I have a team of, like, medical professionals like you understand some psychologists some um neurologists some psychiatrists um i'm an occupational therapist myself um i have like scn um special education needs mm -hmm. specialists 
this and that, and we're all black in it. Yeah. But we're based all over the world, like you understand. Certain men are based in Canada, some are based in America, some are based here in the UK, some are there in Africa, like you understand. But for this conference, we go down and you know put our rings together and become the most amazing team you've ever seen. Mm. So like in a week uh, spent in Nigeria. Not only did we have like major conferences to change the narrative of what like autism is actually about, but also like you know we were able to give like free consultations. So we saw about five hundred families. Wow. Um, this this year. Just spreading awareness, basically. Yeah, just in Nigeria, bro. And then we went off into Ghana as well, which is where I'm born. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, when I went there last year. It was like, oh my God, this is the land of my birth. This is where my mum and my mm. dad is from. This Emotional is where, time. yeah, this is where my history stems from. Mm. Like, you understand? So it felt, it felt amazing. Like this year, same, but like this year, I had my my heart on like buying some land, like setting some foundations, like building some properties mm. there. Like I see man like Lethal B like putting together properties in Ghana from back in the days. Like yeah. you understand? So now he's like proper established. I was always jealous of that, like you understand. So nowadays I'm like, no, I'm I'm doing it now. Like you understand? Nothing yeah. can't stop me. So Nothing bought... before it's time though. Yeah, You're doing for it. Real, like, for it's real. getting done. You for get real me? for real, my bro. And like this year I managed to like acquire four acres of land, like in a prime spot. It's like on a mountainside, isn't it? So mm. like when you're looking at the horizon, you can see the whole of Accra city is so Dope. beautiful. Dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm building over there and making my foundations there now. Yeah, yeah, you sound yeah. like you're doing a lot of work, man. For sure, for sure. Like, I want to build, like, an autism centre over there. Like, because I feel bad, like, I'm over there helping people for a week. When I leave, what's the plan B? Like, you understand? What's the next steps? So mm. I feel like building a national autism centre in Ghana would help the families who are also going through similar things to myself, like, because, like, again, I had a deal when my son was initially diagnosed, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And, like, <laughs> when he got the diagnosis, I was like, wait there. Like, a lot of things started stemming through my head, like, you understand? I was like, what is autism, number one? Mm. I had no idea it's a, like, neurological or brain condition mm -hmm. like it just means that your brain is wired it differently just functions different yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, I, I feel like kids with autism it's like they're superheroes man absolutely they're smart absolutely. kids man they absolutely. just tap into certain things differently absolutely different frequencies you feel me that's 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 really true to say and like i always felt like i was different when i was growing up i couldn't like put my finger on it. I couldn't tell if I was moving around too there much. There weren't no diagnosis then. Yeah, we didn't exactly. know what ADHD was, exactly. OCD back then. Exactly. We didn't know nothing about this. So even yeah. when kids were getting in trouble, majority mm. of young black kids getting in trouble yeah. in school and getting detention and getting yeah. expelled, they didn't stand a chance because they Absolutely. was even diagnosed. Exactly. It was overlooked. Absolutely. So it's good now mm. that the times have changed and you 100%, know. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So like even for myself, yeah, when my son was going through his diagnosis. I was like, raw, everything that they were saying as symptoms, I have that. <laughs> like, you understand? Oh. They was like, oh, your son's hypermobile. I was like, that's, that's, that's a good you. thing. <laughs> like, yeah. you understand? They was like, oh, his hearing is hypersensitive. I was like, that's a good thing. My yeah. hearing is hypersensitive. Mm. Like, you understand? They was like, you know, like his communication is like not 100. And I was like, you know what? I found it difficult to communicate as a child. It didn't mean I couldn't understand. Mm. Like, you understand? So, like, again, it was just puzzling me, innit? So I was like, raw, if he's got autism, then I must have it as well. But, like, to what degree, who knows? It's yeah. a spectrum disorder, innit? There's a different screen and different spectrum. Yeah, 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 it's a spectrum disorder. So, again, I was just taking it that, like, um, he would be all right at the end, as long as I give him the attention that yeah, he needs. Yeah, the and, nurturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, I was out there, like, confused for a bit, like, you understand? It really got to me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit music. Like, you understand? Oh, off the saying? back of your son yeah. being diagnosed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm going to quit music. You're that passionate about quitting music to yeah. do with that? I mean, family meant more to me than any kind of chart success or being a celebrity. Yeah, but obviously so music it. pays the bills. That's your, Absolutely. Your, your bread and butter. And I suppose I learned that one the hard way, like, you understand? So, like, months into, or even years into, like, trying to maintain a lifestyle, 
money is just hemorrhaging, isn't it? Mm. You're losing bread, losing bread. At the same time, you're trying to make sure your son's got everything and trying to yeah. treat him normal. Because you've been so, used to a lifestyle yeah, already. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? So again, like for me, it was like my baby mother was like, oh, are you going to get a job now? Or like, what's the plan? And I was like, I ain't got no plan. Like, I don't know. I just know God's got me kind of mm. thing. And like, for me, it was like, things was changing, but it was outside of my control. I just had faith that I could make it make sense in the long run. So again, like as money was dwindling, I had to touch the roads again. Like, you understand? And like, these times I wasn't sure if I could still still sell drugs and this and that and by this, mm, this point you've my been face off the road for how long these my times bro now? like years and years in it so like my face is mad popular still everyone's still like oh you're the guy from Big Brothers this that and the other so I'm like mm, this one is tough <laughs> like you understand mm. like if I go jail that's news and like I don't really want that kind of hype around me I mm. saw enough man guy in jail like Corey from Damage this that like there was no reason. Like, for it, I don't want that kind of hype, like, you understand? Mm. Like, if I go to jail, I want to go to jail quietly. And so forth and so on. I don't want it in the press and that. Yeah. But, like, um, obviously, we had our fair share of bad press with Flawless getting caught with drugs and this, that. Like, we was doing the Scooby-Doo 2 uh, red carpet event, like, you yeah. understand? Like, so you had your tune in the Scooby-Doo 2 soundtrack, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, had a couple cool. tunes in there still. Like, we, we had put in work on the soundtrack, so when you see, like, uh, Ruben Studded or Blink-182, like, on the soundtrack, yeah. like, we had them in the studio, like, Swear doing tunes. Yeah, 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 100%. And, like, you know, we... The way that even came about is that, like, uh, the producers of Scooby-Doo 2 saw us on um, a program called CD UK mm -hmm. on Channel 3, and on this particular performance, we had like fire dancers. Oh, sweet. Like the show like looked a like circus a circus looking. Yeah, thing. it looked like a show. So they was like, nah, we need you like to come out and, and be in the film. So we was like, yo, we used to love the cartoon as kids. You men are doing a film, gotta be in it. Like, you understand? So went to um, Vancouver actually to film. Mm -hmm. And um, once the red carpet was going on, like we had filmed everything was everything bro we was about to hit a whole new level of success and like um flawless for whatever reason had like 1.1 grams of of um of weed on him like you understand who's the hardest <laughs>